and the ground. The Nomad 23 Poda Pole, or whatever pole you want from DX Engineering. At $140 at the time of videoing. Awesome little fiberglass pole, though. Let's get to the video. Okay, step one. Auger a hole in the ground. At a little bit of an angle. Opposite of where you're going to extend your antenna on your in-bed half wave. Okay, that's about as far as I can go. That looks to me to be about, oh, I don't know, 18 inches. Hang on for step two. Step two is, look at a bag. What's in the bag? <coughs> oh, well, let's see. It is my brand new Nomad 23. This is from DX Engineering. And other, also in the bag is a couple of guy out rings and a, uh, a plastic cap that replaces this cap to make it a little bit easier to use. Anyways, let's stick it in the ground and hook an antenna up to it. kit also comes with these little hooks so you can put a hook on the ring and hook a wire to it or hook an in-fed half-wave antenna to it however you want to do it I think this time around I'm going to try hooking the wire to it and leave the antenna on the ground let's give it a shot oh, I should probably do this video so at dusk or dawn so that the sun is not driving the video camera phone all right so there's the pole that ring is sitting at 14 feet if it wasn't in the ground roughly 18 inches so we're gonna call that 12 or 13 feet actually that antenna in the background is 13 feet so we're probably at 12 the antenna slopes out to that stake in the ground right there's my finger right there it's electric fence steak. So anyways, let's see what happens when we get on the air. Fan just quit working. Battery operated. Less noise. Alright, I'm going to get my DX Engineering RG8X, I think it is. 25 foot cable. Let me get it strung out and hooked up to the... Uh, I'm either going to put it on the Yaesu 991A that's in the man pack or I'll put it on the 710 that's installed right there look, look at this by the way Bearcat Anytone DMR speaker still can't hear people Anytone 778 I think another Anytone 778 I'll get the antenna on the back of this one you can't even you, but you probably can't even see it it's literally one of those little stubby people call them just a I don't know. They call it a waste of time. Anyways, it's only got to communicate to a repeater tower five feet on the other side of that wall. Anyways, let me grab this. Let me get this wire ran. All right, here we go. Run it on a 20 amp hour bio bio and a battery, by the way. Let's go ahead and spin her up to right there. And where's the lock button for this radio? So we got it locked down. And there's no 
Wow. The noise went away. Here's 710 on a it's on an end fed half wave. And look at the noise on that thing. I'm gonna switch the wire, put it over there, and see if the noise changes. Let's try it out. Alright, I swapped the antenna. It doesn't make much of a difference. They're both in fed half waves. The other one is uh, 130 feet long. This one's only 64. I'm, I'm, I'm averaging, by the way. It's not exactly 130. It's probably closer to 133. But regardless. And it's also 13 feet off the ground, set up as an in vis, and it works tremendously well. I ran this one as a sloper, thinking that maybe I can reduce the noise a little bit, and I also ran it in a different direction. And so far, proof is that the noise is still about the same. Well, I just was listening to somebody, I think he said North Carolina, and that's on the sloper. And I'm on the uh, Invis here, and I wasn't picking him up very well. So, sloper for the wind so far, but he's in a QSO with somebody I can't hear. I'm going to try putting up the other pole and running that in-fed half wave as an invis on these two portable poles. Wish me luck. I might try to get in on this. All right, so this is this is on the uh, this is on the invis that I just got set up. Um, let me show you what it is. If you've been watching, you know what it is. Here you go. All right, so I got these these uh, these explorer not explorer poles, but this uh, oh, what's it called? You saw it at the beginning of the video. I can't remember. Nomad 23 from DX Engineering. I set two of them up. I augered a hole in the ground. That's the only support. It's about 18, 12 to 18 inches down. And the only support is the hole in the ground. No guy wires. So this, this pole, I'm holding the phone level. And you can see the pole is basically level. Alright, so go to the other pole. Right down here. Oh, my wife's home. You got groceries? Okay, I gotta help with groceries in a minute. But, oh, she said she's got it. She's great. All right, so here's the other end of the pole. This pole, the first hole, one back there, <coughs> was drilled slightly canted, so it would just lean back ever so slightly. This one, I, I drilled it perfectly straight. And let's look at the difference in, it, in the angle. So, there's a little bit of angle on that, but compared to the pole to pole, 20 the, the carbon fiber and the DX, DX uh, commander explorer pole these poles with with tension really tension I would show you the wire but you won't be able to see it anyway um, I can't even see it in the camera but anyways with tension on it these poles are basically I mean I call that straight straight a lot, a lot straighter than the other two hold up those other two poles are just ridiculously thin um, sure there's a weight sacrifice but I didn't get these for POTA. I didn't get them for backpacking. I got them to put in my truck to use for an emergency setup for, for, for running. Man, look at the sun. It's ridiculous, isn't it? So I got them for emergency setup because I always have a cordless drill in my truck. And I always carry my antenna bag, which has the auger in it. So the thought is, what if, like at the beach, there's no poles? There's no trees. I can't set that thing up and uh, and and have it to where I can run invis good. So I'll, I I got I saw these on uh, DX Engineering. They were advertised. They're a bit expensive. I'm not gonna lie. I think they were $142. And uh, but they're fiberglass, so they're non-conductive. They're more rigid. They're heavier. But like I said, I bought them for for truck emergency communication or boat whatever um, you know you can put it in a 
but a waterproof uh, you, duffel you bag. Uh, I'm going to figure out where that guy's at. I'm going to call and find out. And I'll put it in the description of the video. Or maybe I'll put it in as a little, uh, you know, little pop-up. Little pop-up, pop-up words. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's it. Nomad Poles. I give them a win uh, for setting up Invis in the field uh, for, for POTA. But, you know, you probably would want to be close to your vehicle. They're not ridiculously heavy. You could put two of them in a backpack, but then you're carrying a drill. Or I guess you could use a little hand trowel if you wanted to dig a hole and put them in for support. Or you could throw a couple of, um, you know, put maybe three or four uh, stakes in the ground and guy it off. Yeah, however you wanted to do it. Um, maybe just dig a shallow hole with the back of your boot heel or something. And then uh, throw some guy wires on it. Uh, guy ropes, I mean, guy wires, ropes, whatever you want to use, and uh, run it like that. Uh, and and that particular disc that I have on there, it actually stops uh, at the 14 foot mark. So 13, 14, 15 feet for an invis works tremendously well. I've talked uh, shortest distance so far to date, eight miles. Farthest distance, 480 miles to Mississippi on invis. Anyway. Um, that's that's the uh, the the Nomad Nomad uh, 23. How they recommend it so far. Thanks for watching.